Well guys, I don't want to speak too soon, but it's starting to feel like last year when I have Halloween news to talk about a couple times a week. Today, the floodgates totally opened and we have a ton of new things to talk about. I kind of organized this list in order of importance, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about and it kind of all ties together. So the first thing is that Nick Castle confirmed on his Twitter account yesterday that he will be coming back to play The Shape in Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. The interesting thing there was that James Jude Courtney at the time wasn't included in the announcement. So people were like, oh, is he actually coming back to play Michael Myers in the entire movie, which I was kind of going back and forth on because I would be excited to have the original shape come back for Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, the entirety of them. I gotta be honest, I was pretty much 50-50 split down the middle between excited and kind of nervous because the one person who's been absent from all of these announcements is James Jude Courtney, who to me is the shape. But then thankfully today, Nick Castle sent out another tweet where he announced that yes, James Jude Courtney will be coming back to play Michael in both movies as well. So everything is just kind of falling into place here. And obviously I would love it if Nick Castle came out and said, I'm going to get into shape. I'm going to play the shape in all these movies a lot more than I did in Halloween 2018, but he's an older dude. And I just feel like James Jude Courtney really sold the performance of Michael Myers in Halloween 2018. This feels like his moment to be the Kane Hodder of the Halloween franchise. And if you don't know what I mean by that, Kane Hodder actually joined the Friday the 13th franchise once it was already in full swing and pretty popular, but he did such a good job portraying the role of Jason that nowadays he's pretty much the definitive Jason that everyone looks back on. Like it's very rare that you have a slasher icon like Jason or like Michael Myers where you can connect one person to them. Unlike Freddy who you say, oh, Robert England is Freddy because it's just Robert England's face. You know, Michael Myers and Jason are both covered by a mask. So you don't really look at them in the same way. But now Halloween has that moment that Friday the 13th had all those years ago. And really I'm just excited to have him back because while on screen, he is one of the most brutal killers of all time. In real life, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about this dude. Everyone loves meeting him. He loves taking pictures with people. He always answers people on Instagram and Facebook. Like people were genuinely nervous that he wasn't going to come back after playing Michael Myers in one movie. And that's, that's insane to me. It's just really cool that he was able to become that character and just be such a good person that people want him to come back that badly. So yeah, I'm, I guess I'm just glad he's coming back. Sorry if that was a little long winded. And now I get to talk about a rumor that's been cleared up, which always feels good because while I like talking about speculation and rumors and stuff like that, it's always good to have concrete facts from the horse's mouth. You know, it's nice to hear things from Blumhouse and Universal because I feel like they're all so timid to actually tell us things and then the leaks happen and we don't know what's going on and people just generally get confused. But what we heard is that Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends are going to be shooting back to back. So right when they finish the very last shot on Halloween Kills, they're just going to keep rolling right on through into Halloween Ends. And I kind of like that and I kind of didn't because if you film two movies back to back, obviously they're going to have the same tone. They're going to have the same visual identity. But if something doesn't go well when you screen Halloween Kills, it's that much harder to go back and change things in Halloween Ends. You know what I mean? Now where this gets confusing is that my favorite VP over at Blumhouse, Ryan Turek, he is the co-host of the Shockwaves podcast with Rob Galuzzo, Elric Kane, and Rebecca McKendry. So he went on that show today to kind of say goodbye because he's going to the East Coast to film Halloween. It was actually very sad because I love having him on the show, but he said that they aren't shooting back to back. And that's kind of weird, right? Because we've heard these rumors that they're shooting back to back and they know the release dates of both movies. So why wouldn't they? Well, if we look back to the interview Collider posted that I talked about in my last video, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride basically told us this. They said they are shooting the movies back to back in September, but they're going to be taking a breather between each movie. So they're going to shoot Halloween kills and then they're going to take a small break and shoot Halloween ends. So it's kind of back to back, but it's not necessarily the rush schedule that I thought it was. And that's perfect. Again, the thing I keep saying is I want these movies to be simple. I want them to continue the mythology that they set up in Halloween 2018, but I don't want them to feel rushed. I want them to use all of the time they have to film accordingly. I want them to go back and look at what they shot with Halloween kills, say, okay, this works, this didn't, and use that to influence what they shoot for Halloween ends. That seems like the best way to make the movies from someone who doesn't necessarily know how they're making these movies. Speaking of filming these movies though, another confirmation we did get is that they are shooting them in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, yes, that is a move from Charleston, South Carolina, but it's really not that far. It's only three hours away ish. So geographically, it is going to look very similar to Halloween 2018. And we'll have Haddonfield looking visually pretty much the same for two movies in a row, which I honestly 
honestly really like. Obviously, shooting in the same geographical area is better than what we've gotten over the past few decades with Halloween, which basically moved all around from Pasadena, California, all the way to Salt Lake City, Utah, which neither of those actually look like the Midwest. Now, I'm definitely not going as far as to say that Charleston, South Carolina and Williamton, North Carolina look anything like Midwest towns, because if you Google them, they really don't. But if you compare them again to what we've had before with Pasadena and Salt Lake City, Utah, they look a whole lot better. And I do have a knowledge base of what Midwest towns look like, even though I live out here in LA. I grew up outside Detroit. My girlfriend grew up in Chicago and I used to go visit her all the time after I graduated college. I've been to Ohio a few times and of course, Indiana. So I know what the Midwest looks like. That's not what we're getting with these Halloween movies, but it's close enough once again. And I definitely saved the craziest news story of all for the people who actually watched through my entire video. So thank you. So Collider's writer, Jeff Snyder, that was a weird rhyme. He just started a podcast called The Snyder Cut, which side note is a great name for a podcast. He's actually the guy who's been leaking all of this Halloween news early, and I'm sure Blumhouse doesn't like him for that, but he did talk about a character that is returning for Halloween Kills. And of course, this is a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt. So he says that Tommy Doyle is actually going to be coming back in the next movie, and maybe even Halloween Ends, and that they were looking at trying to get Paul Rudd to come back, but unfortunately, he couldn't do it because he's shooting the new Ghostbusters movie. Now, to be fair, Snyder is right on a lot of his leaks, especially when it comes to Halloween, but this one just felt a little weird to me, so instead of just reading the pull quotes on the Collider article, I decided to go in and actually listen to the podcast, and it still does sound a little bit weird and maybe a little bit off to me. First off, they don't know where the character fits in the Halloween timeline. Of course, they do know that he's in Halloween 6 because that's Paul Rudd playing him, that's one of his first roles, but then they're like, oh yeah, I think he was introduced in Halloween 5 as one of Jamie Lloyd's friends, and I don't really know where that came from. So I would take this rumor with a grain of salt. But that being said, I would be cool with Tommy Doyle coming back. He did have an encounter with Michael Myers when he's a kid, and they are bringing in other characters, and since most of Allison's friends are dead and Ray is dead at this point, they do have emotional touchstones for him to come back into this movie and be a Michael Myers hunter once again like he was in Halloween 6. The thing I really want to avoid here, though, is making this feel like Halloween The Ride. Haddonfield is supposed to be a small Midwestern town, and you know what happens when people graduate high school or college in small Midwestern towns? They leave, especially if they had an encounter with a crazed serial killer when they were kids. You know, I really wouldn't want to stick around in that town and just having people like, oh, hey, there's Tommy Doyle. Oh, hey, there's Lindsay Wallace. Oh, Ray's related to one of the bullies that bullied Tommy Doyle in the first movie. It's just like, how many of these people would still be around in Haddonfield? And that's kind of what I mean by calling it Halloween the Ride. It just doesn't feel authentic at that point, but I feel like we can put our trust in David Gordon Green and Danny McBride and of course Ryan Turek as the guy on top of all of this stuff to make sure it's done right. That's just somewhere where I'd get a little bit nervous if I started to see more of these characters from the first movie coming back in. I also just think it would be a little weird and a little bit forced to take characters from other Halloween timelines and just shoehorn them into this franchise after they were so deliberate about making sure everyone knew they were ignoring everything after Halloween 1. If you're just going to complicate things even more going forward, then why did you go through all that trouble in the first place? But once again, it doesn't sound like Paul Rudd's coming back. I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on why I don't necessarily think that would be the best idea. So yeah, that's all the big Halloween news I have for you guys from the past couple days. I'm actually working on some other bigger videos right now. I have a Friday the 13th review I've been working on for a month. I have some really cool Halloween speculation videos I've been working on. So there's some good stuff in the pipeline. And of course, as Halloween news drops, I will keep covering it. So make sure when you subscribe, you hit the notification bell and do me a huge favor when you get that notification, watch through the entire video because that means YouTube will take that video, say, oh, a ton of people are watching it. I'm going to feed it out to the rest of his subscribers. It's a weird way that YouTube works now, but that's just how it goes. Anyway, guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.